what I'd like to do is um, share with you uh, some recent work we've been doing in uh, uh, setting of uh, recommender systems, uh, session-based recommendation, next basket recommendation. One of the things um, that uh, we're interested in, uh, some of the students and myself and some of the colleagues at, at ALTA has is um, this trade-off between learning ever more complex uh, uh, models of um, that represent items or that perhaps represent users on the one hand, and on the other hand, um, uh, trying to understand behavior, uh, user behavior, uh, and then the mix of those two signals and when to, when to use what. And so, as you'll see uh, in the talk today, um, there's very much this trade-off uh, that's at play in the back. And uh, I have some, some lessons at the end uh, that uh, um, we're taking on board in some of the developments uh, at Alta has it. Right. So it's, as I said, it's ongoing, uh, it's recent work and ongoing joint work with uh, lots of colleagues. And I'd like to acknowledge this uh, and them uh, before we start. So they, they make an enormous difference. Uh, and without them, uh, I wouldn't have been able to talk about this work. So thank you uh, so much. Um, so let's set the scene and then dive into some details. Uh, uh, look at some data, uh, look at some algorithmic uh, recommendation uh, solutions and some lessons learned there, uh, and that'll be it. Um, I'm not looking at the chat box, uh, but uh, Nava, if uh, there are some questions, uh, feel free to interrupt me and I'd be happy to try and answer them. Uh, right, the important thing here is to um, for me to convey a message and for you to, uh, for the message to arrive at your end, it's not the, the most important thing for me to reach my final slide. Anyway, let's get started. Um, and so we've heard a lot about uh, algorithmic process, uh, progress in AI um, over the last years, uh, right? Uh, a lot of work uh, on uh, using um, deep learning based methods, mostly deep learning based methods. Uh, in some sort of uh, perception uh, capacity, uh, understanding speech, uh, understanding images, uh, moving images better. Uh, a lot of recent work on uh, language technology, both in, in machine translation, uh, in, in dialogue systems, uh, but also in, in other types of structures, more and more uh, biological structures, uh, uh, chemical structures. Uh, strategies in, in ever more complex and ever more open-ended games. Um, um, great, uh, it's super interesting, fascinating. Uh, what I'm interested in is um, uh, developing technology that combines this with uh, uh, an understanding of, of human behavior uh, in the context of, of um, connecting people to information. Uh, so. Uh, and that is very broadly conceived um, in, in my team. Uh, so could be documents, could be items, could be services, um, could be um, answers, questions. Um, uh, we don't really distinguish uh, between uh, these different flavors anymore because they're, um, they're being merged. They're beginning to look alike uh, ever more. So in search traditionally we had uh, users expressing a need in recommendation, uh, uh, maybe not so much explicitly expressing a need, but uh, we had a profile, or at least the purpose of the service was uh, was obvious. Um, and uh, we would then suggest additional items. In a more conversational setting, uh, the initiative is not just with uh, the user, uh, but also with, um, with the system. Uh, where it could ask follow-up questions, uh, elicit interests, needs, um, uh, ask for confirmation, uh, what have you. And as I said, the differences between these uh, traditionally uh, segmented uh, types of technology are, are beginning to blur with conversational search, with uh, query-based recommendations, with lots and lots of mixed initiative scenarios. And so I'll zoom in on, on uh, Recommendations uh, for the rest of the talk. It's important to keep in mind that we have different flavors of uh, recommender systems. So uh, just item recommendation or 
session based recommendation so where a user has logged on uh, and we try to understand what uh, uh, the previous interactions in the ongoing se uh, session mean uh, how to interpret them and then based on this uh, or partly based on this suggest a next item or a next uh, service um, in sequential recommendation um, we might be looking uh, not just at the current session but also at uh, historical sessions uh, and often the, the challenge there is to somehow balance uh, recent interest with uh, um, long-term interest and, and how the two play off. Uh, and in next basket recommendation, we actually have a mixture uh, of all of the above, um, where it's not individual items so much that we'd like to um, show to users, but uh, sets of items that somehow go together. Um, and that uh, in a that could be a simple set, it could be a cart, it could be a shopping basket, um, it could be um, maybe a playlist, uh, so it could have lots of additional structure uh, as well. Now, uh, as I said at uh, uh, near the opening, uh, one of our key interests is um, how to combine and what to do with uh, analyze, understanding, analyzing uh, the content of, of items of collections of items uh, on the one hand and, and behavioral data on the other hand. So, um, as I said, a, a lot of uh, advances in uh, AI and deep learning over the last few years were had to do with um, better modeling, better capturing, better representing um, texts, uh, videos, uh, images, uh, music, you name it. Um, that's algorithmically uh, super interesting. Uh, it's a rapidly growing field. Um, it's also computationally very expensive. It's often very hard to reproduce the results. Um, and it's uh, often very hard to generalize the results um, from one data set to the next uh, or from one lab to the next versus um, uh, trying to capture uh, human behavior when uh, people interact uh, with the items uh, potentially of interest to them, uh, try to interpret this, try to learn from it, try to determine what interventions to take. Intervention could be uh, show an item, ask a question. Uh, and uh, what I also like about this, you know, ultimately that's the purpose, right? That we, um, we help people uh, move forward uh, have a good time or achieve a task uh, in a satisfactory manner. And so getting the data to determine this and then directly working on this data um, has something appealing uh, algorithmically, right? Uh, there's no detour through objects there. It's the data that people generate, learn from this data, uh, intervene uh, to maybe change that data if that's what you think you need to do. But of course, this is also a big challenge that comes with challenges, uh, sensitivity, uh, maybe non-availability to, um, to academics, et cetera. So a few years back, uh, we put together this uh, click models for, for web search that's really on the second aspect here. And it's a very impoverished, um, if you like, uh, um, substrate of human behavior, just clicks. Uh, all we do in this book, uh, uh, is we discuss uh, dozens of models uh, for um, modeling clicks, uh, click behavior. Um, and of course, the interest there is what additional assumptions do you make about human behavior and to which degree um, do you have evidence for this behavior? To which degree can you accurately determine uh, any parameters that might be associated with the models that you assume about human behavior? And that could be um, uh, assumptions about how a page is uh, examined or how uh, for a particular user uh, items might be uh, that they inspect that they examine are uh, dependent or not dependent on items that they interacted with before etc so it's an ongoing uh, and long-lasting interest uh, and i think one of the big challenges that we have uh, going forward is to build models of richer types of uh, behavior and hopefully uh, models that, that we can learn accurately um, 
without uh, insane volumes of data about uh, human behavior. So uh, to the talk, uh, well, it's about repeat behavior and we all know repeat behavior. We actually have uh, movies devoted to repeat behavior. Maybe this is one of the, the better known ones, uh, Groundhog Day where uh, the main character, um, uh, Bill Murray, um, played by Bill Murray, uh, gets stuck in, I think it is um, February 2nd uh, for uh, a number of weeks until, of course, he changes as a person and then he gets out of uh, the loop and, and moves on uh, with his life. Um, this is all about repeat behavior, uh, about neg negative aspects, perhaps, of repeat behavior or uh, comical as aspects of uh, repeat behavior. Uh, but what I'd like to do next is uh, show a few uh, examples of repeat behavior as we see it in data sets and in real world data, not just in movies, and then uh, come with some algorithmic approaches uh, for uh, recommendation purposes that use uh, this key aspect of uh, human behavior in, in certain contexts. Namely, we do the same thing again and again and again. So there we go, repeat behavior. Um, Here's a, a screen dump of uh, my iTunes library. Um, you don't see the top of it, you don't see the bottom of it, but you do see uh, here uh, the number of plays per song. And you see that the uh, songs that have been played uh, hundreds uh, of times are actually songs that have been played uh, more than a thousand times. Um, well, there are also plenty of songs that are almost new, uh, you know, with the play counts uh, below 10 well below 10. But just that's just an example of N is 1. Uh, here's some other evidence from open data. Um, uh, data sets uh, made available over the last couple of years uh, for different uh, challenges and benchmarking activities. Uh, you choose that has uh, e-commerce sessions. Uh, Diginetica was, uh, I think that was CIKM 2016 e-commerce search uh, sessions over um, uh, a couple of months. And, and Last.fm has, uh, this particular Last.fm data set has uh, listening habits of, I think, around a thousand uh, listeners. And uh, they all come with training, validation, and test uh, splits. And if you look at those splits, you'll see that uh, in each of the splits, there's uh, between 20 and 25% of the items uh, being uh, consumed are items that have been consumed before. Um, okay, so that's that's a significant uh, chunk. Here's another example based on three uh, next basket recommendation um, data sets. Uh, Tafong is a, has next ba has basket recommendation uh, data for uh, for a Chinese shop uh, four months worth of it. Uh, Dan Humby has two years of transactions with the basket information and Instacart has, a, I forget the exact period, but uh, the, it has uh, 3 million grocery orders. Um, so again, uh, we can infer the, the baskets from this and uh, you know, it, it varies. Uh, Tafong is around 20% uh, repeat. Uh, but in Instacart, it goes up to 60%. Uh, 60% of the items that you find in a basket are items that uh, that same user has uh, purchased uh, or consumed before. Here's another uh, example uh, from a, a European uh, food retailer uh, that I can't reveal, but uh, that we looked at uh, three type, types of customer, uh, people who shop online only, people who shop offline only, and people who, who do a bit of both, uh, sometimes online, sometimes offline. A sample of uh, uh, close to 3 million transactions with uh, 300K uh, uh, customers. And here you see the, the cumulative distribution of, of the repeat ratio for different groups of customers. Um, and you see there's, uh, a lot of repeat uh, purchase. Um, and you see that um, there's a lot of 
there's a, quite a big difference between the different channels. Uh, so the repeat behavior amongst offline uh, customers, so people who go to a, a physical brick and mortar store is lower than uh, for uh, online customers, so who shop online only, and the multi-channel, so people who shop uh, sometimes online, sometimes offline, it's uh, somewhere in the middle there. Okay, so what? Um, well, again, the motivation uh, we had for looking at this work was um, what can we do? Uh, invest more and, and do more research into uh, learning better representations of, of customers and of uh, items that they might be interested in, or uh, try to understand their behavior better. Um, uh, Right, that's, uh, that's uh, one of our leading research questions and it has been for, for quite a while. Um, so in the recommendation setting, uh, what items to recommend next? Uh, if we are in a setting where we see an awful lot of repeat behavior, then shouldn't we simply do that as a first uh, approach? Uh, just show, recommend uh, what a user has seen before, has, has actually positively interacted with before how often should we, and, or should we do it at all, uh, uh, offer um, opportunities for discovery? Of course, this is an old uh, trade-off, an old question. Uh, we've looked at it uh, in, um, in many, many contexts. Uh, in machine learning, it's a, it's a traditional trade-off uh, uh, where, where once you've learned something, just keep rerunning that, exploit it, um, if you do that, you miss every opportunity to learn and become better uh, with new items, with new users, perhaps. Also for people, we know uh, people display a lot of um, exploit and repeat behavior. So if, if you know that something works for you, then that's what you do. Uh, but of course, some people uh, try something new every now and then. Everyday reality is that uh, people actually prefer to exploit uh, at consumption time. So you consume uh, what you know well, but uh, looking back, so after the facts, people that seem to enjoy uh, exploration, trying out something new, uh, much more than uh, exploiting the same. So there's an interesting trade-off there. Uh, So um, let me share with you some details about uh, three recent approaches to, uh, well, one to session-based recommendation and two to um, basket, uh, next basket recommendation. And some of the um, ideas we, we followed there and some of the uh, approaches um, we developed and some of the lessons that we learned. So this is um, uh, based. This is session-based recommendation. It's based on a paper uh, at Triple uh, AI uh, a couple of years ago. An ogenblik. Sorry, that was my phone thinking it, I was talking to it and not to you. Um, right. Um, so what what we did in this paper is uh, to propose uh, a model, RepeatNet, that um, tries to uh, play this trick, um, determine whether it should uh, offer a repeat item or uh, offer um, an explore item, try something new. And so repeat that um, has a, a, a repeat decoder. So it has an encoder of past behavior and then a, a decoder, uh, one for repetition and one for uh, uh, exploration, sorry, that's a mistake here, should be explore decoder. Um, and then what, what its main feature is actually is that it learns to switch between uh, uh, calling the repeat mode versus calling uh, the explore mode. Again, this should be explore decoder. And so this is what it looks like uh, schematically. Um, so it, it try to estimate uh, uh, the best possible item given our set of items, given our catalog. And it does this by uh, decomposing it into uh, estimating um, a, re 
the repeat mode, uh, that the first term you see there after the, um, uh, on the right hand side of the equation, plus uh, an uh, explore mode, that's the second term uh, in the equation. Um, other than that is actually uh, pretty, um, pretty standard, uh, just learned um, a representation of, of sessions plus these two um, uh, um, estimators of repeat versus explore. And so the numbers here are not important. It's a table that's way too big for, for a slide, but um, what I'd like to share here is uh, you saw that fairly simple architecture, right? Here it is. Uh, repeat mode and explore mode and something to estimate whether you uh, do the one or the other for your next item. And here's what we compared it against. Um, so some uh, uh, a set of non-neural methods, uh, the row, the rows at the top, uh, and some uh, back then 2019 state-of-the-art neural recommendation methods um, below that. And it beats uh, on the three data sets that I mentioned before. Um, you choose Diginetica and LastFM. It beats uh, all these methods nearly all of the time on nearly all of the metrics. The met metrics here are um, mean reciprocal rank of the of, um, a relevant uh, recommended item and recall of uh, um, recommended items with, a, as you saw, a fairly simple uh, architecture. So interestingly, uh, we improved the recall, uh, we improved the ranking, we improve uh, hit ratio, not a metric I showed in, in this uh, table. Um, the more repetition there is in the data set, uh, the bigger the delta between repeat net on the one hand and uh, more complex neural or, or traditional methods um, on the other hand. Okay, so repetition matters. Repetition is something you should take on board uh, when you do recommendations. Uh, and of course, what we have here is uh, data sets that are reasonably close to uh, our everyday practices, listening to music, um, uh, doing shopping, uh, and then not shopping for a washing machine or uh, our TV set, which you do every couple of years. No, almost, uh, almost every day uh, grocery shopping. Uh, so there's a lot of potential for repetition. If, so the lesson here is, if there is potential for repetition, you better model it, uh, and you can actually model it reasonably simply. So following up on this lesson, we, we looked at uh, um, some very recent work at uh, Next Basket recommendation. And um, we took an even simpler approach. Uh, it's a two-step approach. Um, it's called T-Rex, a two-step repetition exploration framework for basket uh, recommendation. And so we have a repetition module um, that, can be, uh, that can be a fairly simple uh, module that uh, doesn't have to be um, deep learning based. Uh, it does have to understand um, what the items are um, that a, a user has interacted with before. And perhaps it should also understand uh, you know, what you might call personal frequency information. What are the timelines uh, that a user follows, an individual user follows when uh, he or she uh, consumes this item? Um, so that's a repetition model. Uh, and then an exploration model. Uh, that's typically something uh, content-based uh, where you try to, uh, you might try to learn good uh, representations of items uh, have uh, meaningful um, uh, embedding spaces where uh, where you can go from uh, past items to uh, to new items um, in a in an effective way and in an efficient way, and then assemble, put these two together, um, not by uh, each time deciding whether to repeat or to explore, but uh, no, even simpler. 
you first repeat and then if there's any space left left in the basket you then explore it's that simple again a big table um too big for a slide but again the the, the main point here is uh simply using the repeat behavior um and exploring only when there's space for it uh, allows you to beat uh, state-of-the-art deep learning based methods also state-of-the-art um, uh, nearest neighbor based method methods um, so again uh, it improves recall it improves the ranking uh, it improves the hit ratio uh, on all of the data sets these next basket recommendation data sets um, that we looked at and um, again uh, the delta becomes bigger uh, whenever uh, the, the repetition uh, ratio is higher. Uh, so for customers, users who repeat more, uh, this will do a better job than for those who repeat less. Now, something interesting came up uh, as part of this work, uh, namely that whenever you're in a situation, you're, you're looking at a recommendation problem, uh, we have personalized information. You should always consider as a baseline um, the, the personalized most popular items uh, for recommendation. So in the next line of work, um, that's what, uh, this is all very much ongoing work. Um, this is what we did with uh, those, uh, uh, online only customers, uh, offline only customers, or multi channel uh, customers. Um, with the multi channel customers, you can also look at uh, you know, predicting their next online basket uh, or predicting their next offline uh, basket. You can also run an, an Oracle experiment where you assume that you know um, an Oracle has told you uh, what the next uh, channel is that uh, your multi channel user is going to exploit online or offline and then you do a recommendation for that channel and this matters as you can see uh, in the in the second group of results uh, online uh, for the multi-channel customers online uh, next basket recommendation is easier uh, than offline uh, so if you know uh, which channel uh, you should be dealing with um, you can use this um, also, the online users, as, as I said before, the online uh, only customers, they do a lot more uh, repetition than the, the offline only uh, ones. Um, again, one, one can use this, one should use this. So the lesson here is, um, this was a very simple personal top K uh, recommendation approach. So for every customer, um, we assume we, we know their past uh, purchase behavior, um, both online and offline. We know what they buy frequently uh, through, a, through a loyal loyalty card. Um, and that's very, very hard to beat. Uh, certainly with uh, the neural methods, we haven't yet tried to beat it with um, a T-Rex uh, just for um, um, no other good reason than lack of time. So that's one of the next, um, experiments uh, we have on the drawing board. Um, so first fill with uh, uh, repeat items and then if there's any space left in a basket, uh, uh, complete with uh, explore items. Um, what's also important about these uh, different types of customers is that you they behave differently, uh, the online only, offline only, and a multi-channel, they behave differently you should also treat them differently. You should also uh, give them recommendations differently. There's even less exploration with the um, online only ones than with the offline ones. And so that's what you should take into account. Um, so again, an important lesson here is uh, if you have the data, and in this case, we do have that data through a. Uh, a rich loyalty card uh, schema 
if you have that data, try simple behavioral models uh, with uh, these personalized frequencies first. Of course, this raises a bunch of questions, uh, right? If 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 uh, the, the these um, personal data is so informative, um, how much of it should we use? Uh, how much of it can we hold on to for how long? Um, we can we can talk about that uh, at the end of the talk. So where are we now? Well, certainly. Um, learning this, this first lesson and using that first lesson. Uh, if we're in a recommendation scenario, that's fairly close to everyday life, everyday behavior. Uh, so not once a year events, but uh, way more frequent than that. Um, there is a super strong bias towards repetition that we all display. Um, and so in a recommendation setting, we should uh, use that. Um, now, of course, this comes with a whole bunch of questions. Um, wouldn't it be good if we uh, offered a new opportunities for people? Uh, wouldn't it be good if uh, uh, we, we break certain habits um, uh, for new users for whom we don't have this uh, personal frequency information yet? Uh, when do we know that we've explored enough so that we can switch to uh, a repeat mode rather than an explore only mode or a repeat plus explore mode. Um, if you really stick with this um, heavy repeat bias, um, what are the long-term effects? Um, maybe the short term, uh, in the short term, uh, users um, are more efficient uh, feel recognized uh, by the service, but in the long term, we know that people actually enjoy consuming something new. Uh, so uh, success of exploration is much bigger than uh, success of um, or satisfaction uh, that comes from repetition. So what are some of the long term effects here on users, uh, on learning? Um, and if you're in a multi sided market where you don't just have uh, a platform and users, but also suppliers to the platform and multiple suppliers who also, for the health of the platform and for the health of the suppliers, uh, need to all have um, an opportunity to be seen, to be exposed to customers, uh, for customers to uh, try out um, some of what they have. These these uh, suppliers have on offer. How do we do this? Uh, how do we ensure? with a heavy repeat emphasis, uh, uh, reasonable fairness uh, of exposure. We know, for instance, from the, uh, the track, uh, fair ranking track, that uh, you can't have it all. Uh, you can't maximize utility and be uh, as fair as possible, uh, meaning giving uh, potential um, uh, suppliers with the same merit, uh, all an opportunity to expose uh, their products. You can't have it all. So here you need to make uh, non-algorithmic decisions on, on, on the platform uh, that you'd like to run, on the platform that you'd like to be. Um, and actually that, that same position, that same statement holds true also for, for some of the other statements here, uh, right? Uh, at some point uh, you should think about uh, what the, the bigger goals are that you want to um, optimize for just utility, uh, just uh, consumption, or also um, other aspects. Um, we've experimented in the past, for instance, with um, uh, injecting um, more healthy food items uh, amongst repeat items. Uh, we have to be careful there. Um, if uh, you do this, um, first of all, you have to be open about this. But if you're uh, too aggressive about this, uh, then uh, it actually has a, a, the opposite effect of what you're trying to achieve, uh, namely uh, a negative response to uh, healthy options. Um, and so algorithmically, we can do this. Uh, we can come up with good interventions. Uh, we can run them. We can measure. Uh, 
the impact. Uh, but whether to do this or not, it's not so much an algorithmic decision. Uh, it's more um, a policy decision. Um, similarly, with other types of uh, uh, non-utility or non-revenue based uh, metrics. Uh, what if we uh, would like to uh, reduce waste, uh, food waste? An awful lot is, of food is wasted uh, around the planet. If we were to reduce food waste, uh, not even fully, but uh, substantially, then uh, that would be enough to reduce CO CO2 emissions by a, a really big chunk, and it would also be enough to uh, feed the entire planet. So an awful lot of food is wasted. What you can do is, um, of course, um, try to push food that's um, uh, approaching its um, uh, best buy date uh, and try to convince customers that they should buy this uh, by reducing the cost. Uh, but this may not be this, the thing that they usually consume. This may be a lot alternative, a substitute to what they normally have. So it, you have to think about how to uh, nudge them to, um, to explore more. And that, of course, the typical mechanism here is uh, uh, by substantially reducing the cost of uh, the explore items. Um, so that's, uh, that's an interesting uh, bit of future work um, that's uh, in the pipeline. Right, so let me uh, try to wrap up and I, I see there's a, a bunch of uh, questions uh, in the chat. So um, what I'd like to do is after wrapping up, uh, go through all of the questions and um, um, interact with you. So, the main focus of the work that I uh, told you about uh, has to do with the next basket recommendation. What is the next set of items uh, uh, that we'd like to uh, offer uh, a user? Uh, what we see there is a lot of repeat behavior. If you see that repeat behavior, even in a simpler recommendation setting of session-based recommendation, you have to use it uh, because um, you'll get higher utility. Uh, on most of the standard metrics um, that we know. Um, interestingly, uh, complex uh, content-based methods aren't really needed, uh, certainly not for customers or users that you know well. You may need them for um, users who are new, for items that are new. So what is next? Uh, well, certainly this uh, explore, exploit, balance, uh, trying to uh, not just go for uh, this very heavy um, repeat bias, but also um, bring more exploration because people have more fun, uh, because it's uh, it needed for fairness uh, of a platform. And it, because it may be needed to, uh, to satisfy goals that are not just revenue-based, but that are more uh, social in nature. Think of uh, reducing food waste. Think of uh, nudging people to, to uh, consume more healthy food rather than uh, what they might be consuming now. Um, that's it. Here are some, uh, some references, only some. There's a lot more uh, work on this. The repeat net paper uh, is there. The other two papers uh, on which this uh, work is based, on, on which this talk is based, they're currently under review. And um, I'd like to recommend this first paper here, The Dynamics of Repeat Consumption. It's a, it's a, a great, uh, a lot of data and a bit of modeling paper on, um, uh, by a Google team. Uh, from uh, 2014, um, where you see lots of interesting patterns about uh, repeat behavior in search, uh, right? This is not so much uh, repeat um, in consumption as, uh, as we discussed it. So with that, I'd like to um, uh, thank you for your attention and I'd be happy to, um, to uh, address any questions you might have.